All right, hey, how's it going? So um, I want to talk about how to get to a Linux environment um, for this course in particular, CSC 224, but also moving forward through the CS sequence 222 data structures in C, and even 223 advanced data structures in Java. You really, really want to be working in a Unix environment, okay? Um, you don't want to be using an IDE like Visual Studio or Code Blocks or something, right? You want a Linux environment. You want to be able to get to the command line. Um, you'd also like to get some experience with doing, you know, the kinds of things you would do on a full-blown Linux system, including administrative stuff, if you like, making accounts and, and changing the host name and, and stuff like that. So um, your absolute best bet, if you have the option, is to have a, a laptop that boots into Linux. Right, and you can do that either as a dual boot, which can be kind of sketchy sometimes. Mostly when I dual boot, Windows eventually stops working or Linux breaks. Um, or if you have a laptop that you don't need to run Windows on, you can just turn it into a Linux system, throw away Windows, and that's that's like the cleanest solution. Okay, that's that's what I run. Um, if you have an old laptop that is too slow to run Windows, you can put OS put a Linux on it, and it'll work great. Okay, even if it's like several years old and really, you know, low specs, you can still run Linux on it. Um, but if that's not an option, right, your next best bet is to use something called VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is basically a program. It just runs on top of your current operating system, but it pretends that it's another type of machine, right? It'll, it'll emulate a whole synthetic PC, and on that, that synthetic or virtual PC, you can install Linux, um, and it's a full-fledged Linux experience. It's it's very uh, complete, and that's probably what most people who are running Windows are going to want to do for this course. All right, so let me talk you through the basic setup of um, a virtual box. So the first thing you want to do is you know get to a browser and just search for a virtual box download, and make sure you're coming from virtualbox.org. Okay, some browsers will point you to sites that you know download a version of this with adware bundled in and things like that don't mess around with that all right virtualbox.org and i'm just going to go to downloads and this is pretty straightforward right um right at the top of the page put in your linux your your host operating system and you can download a version for it so if you're running windows go here if you're on a mac and you're doing OS X, go there and just follow the usual sort of um you know, download this somewhere, execute it, and it'll walk you through the setup process. Um, you can mostly take the defaults on the setup, um, and then you're good to go. All right, I'm not going to go through that here because I don't have a Windows machine. I'm running Linux, and, and installing VirtualBox for Linux on a Linux machine is kind of goofy. Um, so I'm going to suppose that you've already downloaded and installed VirtualBox, okay? The next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a copy of Linux. And I'm going to recommend very strongly um, that you do something called Xubuntu, okay? Xubuntu is, it's a full-blown Ubuntu system, but it gets rid of all the fancy kind of uh, expensive, you know, resource-wise um, front end. Um, Xubuntu um, is Ubuntu, but it's really good if you're going to work on the command line, which is where we're going to spend most of our time, okay? Um, straight Ubuntu, you know, comes down with a fancy interface and you got to do a lot of pointing and clicking and so on. And in this course, we're really going to try to minimize how much we use the mouse, right? You want to use your keyboard, um, and stay on the command line. So let's look for X Ubuntu and it's really just Ubuntu with an XFC front end, if you know what that means. And we want version 18.04. Okay. I'm going to say stay away from 20. 18.04 was the previous long-term release. It's good for, um, you know, a while longer. And I'm going to do a direct download. So I'll put in United States and um, just find an AMD64.ISO version. So this one right here will work fine. You just click on it and it will um, ask you where you want to save it and, you know, do the usual drill. All right, so I've already downloaded this and I've already put it into... Um, a download area so I'm not going to do that again but I have this downloaded so let's go ahead and play with VirtualBox now so on your system you'll click an icon to run it on, on Linux I'm just going to kick it off from the command line um, and so it, it brings up a window like this 
okay? It'll look a little different for you, right? I've got a penguin because I'm running it on Linux, but the same setup is going to apply. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to create a new machine. So we're going to come over here and say new, and I'm going to call this um, whatever I want. I'm going to tell it where I want to store my files, um, what type of system I want to create, and what version of that system. So I'm just going to name my system, you know, my Linux. And it's kind of smart. It knows, you know, since I called it my Linux, I probably want a Linux type of file system, but I can do anything I want. So go ahead and do Linux and leave this um, as uh, Ubuntu 64 bit. Okay, so um, even though it's X Ubuntu, just call it Ubuntu. All right, so whatever name you want, where you want your, your virtual machine to live, and this can take, you know, as much disk space as you want. So um, put it somewhere where you have some space. Type should be Linux, version should be Ubuntu 64-bit. And then go to Next. It will ask you how much memory you want in your virtual machine. Okay, one gig is not very much. It will work fine for Linux, but, you know, you may as well make it bigger. I would go up to, like, I don't know, maybe, like, four gig or something. Um, go on to Next, and then you can create a hard disk, okay? Leave it at the default. Create a virtual hard disk now, um, and it's going to make it 10 gigabytes. All right, so that's that's a starting size. Leave this as the default. That's the type of hard disk. Um, let the storage change um, as needed. So mostly we're just taking defaults. Now you can tell it how big you want your virtual hard drive to be. Okay, I'm just doing this as a demo. I'm going to throw it away when I'm done. So I'm just going to go with 10 gig. But you know, if you plan to put a lot of files on here, you might make it bigger. But you know, you can always make another machine with more space and move things and so on. So I would just leave that as a default. Let's go ahead and say create. All right. Well, there's my virtual machine. Okay. So it's called my Linux. It's currently powered off. Okay. Let's go ahead and start it. And the first time I start it, so my windows are popping up off screen here. So the first time I start it, I get this message saying, specify a startup disk. Okay. And I have to tell it um, what. I want to put in my virtual optical drive, right, my CD reader to boot. So this is where I would click on the folder and I would find my um, my uh, Ubuntu download that I did. So I'm going to say add and I'm going to come over here. So on my desktop I have this xUbuntu ISO. I'm going to say open that. All right, and I'm going to say choose. All right, so now it's pretending that I, I took that download, I put it on a CD, and now I just put that CD into my CD reader. And now if I say start, there's a Ubuntu system booting. And when you do this, you can say I either want to try this or I want to actually install it. Um, it's a virtual machine, so there's no downside to just going ahead and installing it. Um, and so I'm going to do an English keyboard, um, English layout, um, download updates, download updates while installing, sure, why not. Um, the computer currently has no detected operating system, right, because this is a virtual machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and say install now. Um, and then say continue. And so there's, you know, a virtual hard drive inside this virtual machine. And it's basically installing um, Ubuntu onto it. So it knows I'm in LA already. And my name is Nick. And this is Nick Virtual Box. And I'll pick a password. It's a fair password. And I'm going to say log in automatically. And while this is going, I'm going to make this window big and we'll increase the resolution shortly. But we'll just go ahead and let this run and, um, and then we'll come back to it once it's booted up. All right, and so it tells us installation is complete. We have to restart our machine. So we'll say restart now. Remember, this is a virtual machine, so we're not rebooting our laptop. We're rebooting this synthetic laptop. 
It says remove the installation medium and press enter. There's nothing to remove, so just go ahead and press the enter key and it should shut down and then boot back up. And so this is what you would see if you, you know, install this on a laptop, for example. You'd see um, these things, you know, flashing on your screen. And there you go. You've got a Ubuntu system. All right. So let me let me just make the resolution a little bigger. So um, we'll search for a display and let's change this to something more reasonable, like I don't know, sixteen hundred by twelve hundred. I don't think that's the right aspect ratio. Um, 14 by a thousand. Nope, that's even worse. Heck, let's just go. Um, yeah, we'll just go with this. All right. So, so there's Ubuntu, right? And I can control Alt T to open a, a terminal window, and I can run commands. Um, I can change this. So let's change, make this a little bigger. So appearance. Let's make our fonts like 14. All right, so there's my terminal window. Um, if I try to compile, right, there is no GCC, but it tells me I can say sudo apt install GCC. So let's do that. And it'll ask me for my login password, so it knows I'm authorized. And I'm, I'm making a change to the system. I'm installing a new package, in this case GCC, the C compiler. So do you want to continue? The default is Y. I can just hit Y or I can hit Enter. Um, and this should run. Doesn't take too long. Just about done. All right, so um, now if I say GCC, it, um, it knows what I'm talking about. It says there's, there's no input files. Um, But let's let's do a hello world. So let's do a high dot C. So we'll do our usual include standard IO dot H. All right, so we'll just print out hello. And now we can say GCC high dot C dash output high. And now if I say dot slash high, it says hello. So you're on the air, right? We've got VI. We've got GCC. Um, we can run things in our, our directory. We can do LS and see what's in our directory. So you can see high and high dot C and so on and so forth. So we've got a full Linux system here, right? But, um, but all of this is, you know, just a program sitting inside my current environment, which, you know, for me is Linux, but for you might be Windows or OS X. Um, and it's just, it's just a program that's running. So it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't replace anything. Um, but it gives you that, that full-on Linux experience. And there's, there's tons of things you can do in here, but that's, that's enough to basically get you on the air. Um, we can talk offline about... Um, you know, how to change the resolution to something reasonable, how to make it look full screen and, and stuff like that. Um, anyway, okay, so that's, that's the quick overview of VirtualBox. Um, thanks.